Okay. In the last class, we spoke about electric charges. We said electric uh, charges. We spoke about positive charges and negative charges. We said examples of negative charges are electrons, while that of positive charges are protons. And we said like charges repel, while unlike charges attract. Like charges in the sense that negative and negative, or positive and positive, while unlike charges in the sense that positive and negative. So today we'll be talking about Coulomb's law and Coulomb's law also agrees with what we said in the last class and it moves ahead to quantify the attraction and repulsion. It is easy to say or things are attracting each other or some things or some bodies are repelling each other but it's also important in science to quantify for by how much is the attraction what is the magnitude of the repulsion so in the last class we spoke about uh, charging by rubbing where we spoke about plastic rods being rubbed with four glass rods being rubbed with silk, and we noticed uh, the interaction that exists. So in this, let me put, that's my spotlight. So in this scenario, we add plastic rod being rubbed with four. Here we have glass rod being rubbed with silk. And later on, we observe that the rubbed plastic and the rubbed uh, glass rod attracted each other. They attracted each other because they possess unlike charges. And we also learned that the two rubbed plastics repelled each other. Two rubbed glass rods repelled each other because they possess like charges and light charges are meant to repel. So now we'll be talking about quantifying the repulsion and the attraction. So that takes us to Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law says that the electric force exerted by a charged body on another is directly proportional to the product of the magnitude of the two charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two charges. So for instance, when we are talking about two charges, it is convenient to talk about uh, Q. We are representing charge with Q. So now since we have two charges, we are talking about charges with magnitude Q1 and Q2. So when we have two charges, whose magnitudes are Q1 and Q2, and they are separated by a certain distance R, then the force of attraction or repulsion between them can be quantified by Coulomb's law, by this expression. Where F is the force of attraction or repulsion, Q1 is the magnitude of the first charge, Q2 is the magnitude of the second charge, while R is the distance of separation. So all the, everything we have said in English language yeah, can be said in the mathematical language down here. So that is the force is of attraction or repulsion is directly proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance of separation between the charges. Let's move on. So when we are talking about something being proportional to another, it is very crucial to introduce a constant of proportionality K. So we have said F is actually proportional to this term. Then it's good to say F is equal to, we introduce a constant of proportionality. And the constant of proportionality here is defined as K 
and k is one over four pi epsilon naught. One over four pi epsilon naught can be approximated to be nine times the power nine newton meter square per coulomb square per coulomb uh, square. Where epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space, so it is assumed that q1 and q2 are in free space. So if it's not in free space, if it's in another medium, it will be a different epsilon. So epsilon naught is permittivity of free space and the measurement is 8.85 times per minus 12 by Newton per meter square, column square. Or, or simply you can, in place of all these units, you can replace as good as farad per meter. So, Oh, sorry. Yes, for that parameter, yes. Then, this expression can also be rewritten as this when we uh, replace k, I will replace k right here with one over four pi epsilon naught. So let's talk about Coulomb's law briefly. Coulomb's law, uh, Coulomb's force, they obey the superposition principle. You know, in the definition of Coulomb's law, we spoke about two charges, but then we may have a scenario where there are more than two charges. In the, the definition I just gave you about Coulomb's law, we were saying uh, two charges, Q1 and Q2, that the force of attraction or repulsion is directly proportional to the product of the magnitude of their charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance separating them. What if we now have a third charge, Q3? What will happen? How do we define Coulomb's law to capture these three charges? And that is where superposition principle comes in. To calculate the, so when we're talking about the force here, we can say, what is the force that Q1 is exerting on Q2 and Q3? We can say, what is the force that Q1 and Q2 are exerting on Q3? So, in that scenario, the law of superposition comes in, which helps us to pretend as if Q3 is not there. For instance, if I want to calculate what is the force of Q1 on Q2 and Q3, I can use Coulomb's law to find the interaction between Q1 and Q2, pretending as if Q3 is not there. And I can also come to say Q1 and Q3, pretending as if Q2 is not there. And in doing that, we must note that when we are talking about force, force is a vector quantity. And being a vector quantity, you must talk about its magnitude and also its direction. So when you are, you cannot use the law of superposition principle without handling force as a vector quantity. So we'll be treating some examples. We will be applying this superposition principle very soon. So it's a conservative force. A Coulomb's force is a conservative force as a force with the property that work done in moving a particle between two points is independent of the path taken. And it's a central force that is, it acts along the line joining the two charges.
Okay, so now we have an example here. It's saying the electron and proton of a hydrogen atom is separated on the average, on the average 5.3 times 10 to the minus 11. So that is the distance. So an hydrogen atom should look something like this. An hydrogen atom is expected to have a proton at the center of the atom at the nucleus and also an electron. Now, the information we have is telling us that the distance of separation, R, and R is equal to 5.3 times 10 raised to the power minus 11 meter. Find the magnitude of the electric force between the two particles. What are the two particles? The two particles are electron, proton. What are the charges of, of both of them? Q1, let's take Q1 to be the charge of electron and Q2 to be the charge of proton. The charge of an electron, like I said in the last class, is 1.6 times 10 raised to the power minus 19 colon. This is the magnitude of the charge. If you want to put the sign of the charge, we'll say minus. But when we are talking about the magnitude of the charge, the minus doesn't really matter anymore. While that of uh, a proton, a proton is positively charged. So plus 1.6 times 10 raised to the power minus 19 colon. So the magnitude of the charge of an electron is equal to the magnitude of a charge of a proton. It's just that an electron is negatively charged while a proton is positively charged. Then what is the magnitude of the electric force between them? The electric force, we are talking about the Coulomb force, we are talking about the force of attraction or repulsion. Since they are opposite charges, we should expect attraction. So the opposite charges, they will attract each other. So uh, how do we go about this? We are going to bring in, uh, we are going to bring in the Coulomb's law, which says F is equal to K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. And that is equal to 9 times 10 raised to the power 9 times the magnitude of the charges is what concerns us now. So that's 1.6 times 10 raised to the power minus 19 times 1.6 times 10 raised to the power minus 19. divided by R squared, divided by R is 5.3 times 10 raised to the power minus 11 meter all squared. And solving the units, the, uh, we should have a unit of Newton. And this should give us, if you, Calculate this after the class, you should have 8.2 times 10 raised to the power minus 8 meter. So this is the magnitude of the magnitude of the force of attraction between the electron and the proton in an hydrogen atom. So now we are talking about the magnitude of the force. We are not spoken about the direction. Fine, the direction will keep changing because the electron will keep moving. But we'll be having examples that have to do with, uh, at, uh, with uh, magnitude and direction very soon. So like I said earlier that force is a vector quantity. It is important when applying Coulomb's law that we talk about the direction because force is a vector quantity. 
we should talk about the direction. So let me read what I have here. Force, force is a vector quantity. This is important when applying Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law is expressed in vector form for the electric force by a charge Q1 on a second charge Q2. So we've spoken about F all the while. Now I'll be talking about F12. And uh, this arrow on above F is telling us that F is a vector quantity. That's F as direction. So F is a vector quantity and uh, F12 tells us that the force exerted by Q1 on Q2. So F12 means that the force exerted by Q1 on Q2. In the previous example, we spoke about an electron negatively charged and a proton positively charged. We called, we even called the electron to be Q1 and the proton to be Q2. In this case, we can say that the force that the electron is exerting on the proton is F12. We can also say the force that the proton is exerting on the electron is F21. According to vector laws, we should note that F12 is equal to minus F21. For us to continue in this class, we need to have a good grasp of uh, some basic things about vectors. And one of the simple examples when talking about vectors is uh, uh, talking about the examples of vectors, comparing vectors and scalars. We say examples of scalar quantities are distance, speed, while examples of vector quantities are displacement and uh, velocity. Let's take, uh, for instance, uh, this is uh, UI gate. This is stretch shadow. And uh, let's say this is department of physics. So this is the gates, UI gates. This is a trench adult. And this is physics. And we have, uh, is it Odudua Road here? And we have Kuti all here, so the Ambelo. And we also have, yeah, is it Niger Road or something? <laughs> if you leave UI gates and you are coming to the Department of Physics, you would travel through these parts. You would travel through these parts. And when the question is asked, what is your distance? What is the uh, distance? What distance have you traveled? You would measure this line, get into pressure door, turning towards the bus tree, coming down, moving through Kuti, below all, and coming to physics. But if the question is, what is the displacement? The displacement you to be joining a line from the Department of Physics to UI gates. The displacement will be drawing a line. And not just drawing a line. The, the length of that line is the magnitude of your displacement. And the direction of this line from gates, it has a direction. We can put coordinates to say, this is the angle. So you, when we are talking about vectors, we specify them in both magnitudes and direction. So the direction from UI gates to physics departments. And also when we are talking about living from physics departments to UI gates, 
What is the direction? The displacement is the same. And the direction, we'll still talk about an angle, maybe let's call it alpha. So the distance is different from displacement. Displacement has direction and magnitude, while distance just has a magnitude, which is just length. So if I tell you that the, dis the displacement Okay, let's use uh, something simpler from your, you stand up from, you, from this end of a room, you move to the end of the other room. And the length of that room is, let's say five meters, five meters. If it's five meters, and you travel from this point in your room to the other point, and what is distance traveled? It is five meters. What is the displacement? It's also five meters, but you say five meters to the east. You mentioned direction. When you are going back, it's all, you, it's, uh, the distance is still five meters, but the displacement is five meters to the west. So you, uh, the displacement, you have the option when going to the right. When going to the right, you have the option of saying, when going to the right, I have the option of saying five meters east or west is the direction. And going to the left, you also have the option of saying minus five meters. East. They are both allowed. You can either say you are going minus five meter east or five meter west. So what this means is that going to the right means five meter east. Going to the left means minus five meter east. So from that, let's have a look at these electric charges here. So when we are talking about uh, uh, the Coulomb's law, I gave earlier, do not have this R12, R12 carrot. R12 is a unit vector directed from Q1 towards Q2. Remember, F12 is the force that Q1 is exerting on Q2, while R12 is the unit vector directed from Q1 towards Q2. So that means that R21 will be the unit vector from Q2 towards Q1. When well, we say a unit vector, a unit vector, the number one property of a unit vector is that the magnitude of that vector is one. A unit vector, unit means one in this scenario. So the magnitude of a unit vector is one. So as long as the magnitude of the unit vector is one, when you go through this equation again, it's, you will not find any difference between this expression and the previous Coulomb's law that I, I displayed a few minutes ago. Well, I said F equal to Q1, Q2 over four pi epsilon naught R squared. This is the formula we had initially on Coulomb's law. And now this is the new formula or Coulomb's law that we have right now. The point here is that the only difference you have between this expression and this is this R12. The R caret one two is a unit vector. Since it is a unit vector, then the magnitude is one. So when you multiply this by one, it makes no difference. So the law, the, it's not a new equation, it's just the same equation expressed in a, in a more acceptable form where we specify direction. So the R12 helps in giving us direction without changing the magnitude of the force. 
So let's move forward. Because the electric force obeys Newton's third law of motion, the force exerted by Q2 on Q1 is equal to the force exerted on Q2, exerted by Q1 on Q2, and in opposite direction. I think I've made mention of that, that the force, okay. So in this scenario, we have a positive charge and a negative charge. Oh, sorry, we have positive and positive rather. We have a positive charge and a positive charge. Looking at Q1 and Q2, the force that Q1 is exerting on Q2 is F12. And you can see the direction of the force is pushing away, it's going away from Q1. Q1, because Q1 and Q2 are both positive charges, Q1 is repelling Q2. Q1 is pushing Q2 away. And the force that Q1 is exerting on Q2 is in this direction, because when you are pushing this away, you'll be moving in this direction. Since Q1 is pushing Q2 away, then we can say that this is the direction of, uh, of the force that Q1 is exerting on Q2. When we also look at this from another angle, because both charges have, uh, I can say they have equal rights as well. As Q1 is exerting force on Q2, it's exerting electric force on Q2 because Q1 and Q2 are both electric charges. Q2 is also exerting force on Q1. So Q2 is exerting force on Q1. And the force that Q2 is exerting on Q1 is also a repulsive force. Q2, as Q1 is pushing Q2 away, Q2, which is also having its own, is likely it's electric, right? Is also pushing Q1 away. And, and this is the direction, this blue line is showing the direction with which Q2 is pushing Q1 away. The direction with which Q2 is repelling Q1. The direction with which Q2 is repelling Q1. And uh, the force is F21. F21, just like the definition we had here on F12, we can also talk about F21 to mean the force that uh, the force that Q2 exerts on Q1. And this is also the direction. And now talking about R12, R12 is just a unit vector, just telling us the direction. Where if we multiply whatsoever we get after using our Coulomb's law, the first Coulomb's law we had, then we can now talk about just add a unit vector. Uh, so multiply, we just multiply with a unit vector. The unit vector will now tell us this is the direction with, uh, of uh, in which the force is being exerted. So let's come to this figure B, where we now have opposite charges, Q1 and Q2. Q1 and Q2 are opposite charges, and we should expect attraction. When Q1, this is Q1, the force that Q1 is exerting on Q2 is F12. And you can see that the force is directed towards Q1. The force that Q1 is exerting on Q2 is an attractive force. It's pulling it close, Q1 is pulling Q2 closer to itself. And that is why it is uh, labeled as F12. Just like we said, the Q2 also has a, what I call electric rights, just like we have human rights. The electric charges also have electric rights such that Q2 is uh, as fine, Q1 is exerting electric force on Q2, but Q2 is also exerting electric force on Q1. Q2 is attracting Q1 because Q1 is an opposite charge. Q2 is attracting Q1. For the fact that Q2 is attracting Q1, this is the direction of attraction. This is the direction with which Q1 is uh, tending towards Q2. And it's labeled as F21. That is the force 
that Q2 is exacting on Q1. So in both scenarios, the magnitude that is in both A figure A and figure B, the magnitude of F21 is equal to the magnitude of F12. Just like this, the magnitude of F21 is equal to the magnitude of F12. The difference is that their direction, you notice that the direction of F21 is opposite that of F12. The direction of F21 here is opposite that of F12. So easily we can uh, say that when we know F21, we can determine F12 by just uh, specifying uh, minus. So by just saying, like I've said earlier, F12 is equal to minus F21. When they are vectors. So I hope uh, as time goes on, would it will be clear to everyone. So this is an example. Then we consider three point charges. Now we are considering three point charges. The three point charges located at the corners of a right triangle is shown below. Q1, let me get my spotlight. Q1 the, and Q3 are equal. Five micro column. While Q2, as an opposite charge, minus two micro column. And uh, the distance of separation between Q1, sorry, between Q2 and Q3 is distance A. And we've been told that A is one, 0 0.1 meter. So when we know A to be 0 0.1 meter, and A here also means 0 0.1 meter. Then uh, using Pythagoras theorem, where you say 0 0.1, to determine, we want to know the distance between Q1 and Q3. If we want to know the distance between Q1 and Q3, we will say 0 0.1 square plus 0 0.1 square all root. And that will give us 0 0.1 root 2. So now the question is saying that find the resultant force exerted on Q3. If you want to find the force exerted on Q3, we have to start by saying, okay, the question is saying, the, find the resultant force exerted on Q3. If you want to find the resultant force exerted on Q3, we should know the force that Q1 is exerting on Q3. You should also know the force that Q2 is exerting on Q3. So what is the force that Q1 is exerting on Q3? From that label, the force that Q1 is exerting on Q3 is F13. And F13 is equal to one, uh, so equal to Q1, Q3 over four pi epsilon naught R13. R13 is the distance of separation between Q1 and Q3 times R13 carats. You should also be so knowing this, we should also be interested in the force. We should also be interested in the force that Q2 is exerting on Q3. We should be interested. What is the force that Q2 is exerting on Q3? And from our, it's our, we like call it nomenclature, style of naming, our, uh, that would be F23, the force that F2 is exerting on 
uh, the, the magnitude of force that Q2 is exerting on Q3. That is Q2, Q3 all over 4 pi epsilon naught R23. And uh, the unit vector that tells us the direction R23 carats. Mm. So when we know the force, because this is like a system of three charges, when we know the force that Q1 is exerting on Q3 and the force that Q2 is exerting on Q3, when we add them together, then we can say we know the force that is exerted on Q3. So when we say the force exerted on Q3 for short, let's say is uh, F3, then we can see our F3 is equal to F13 plus F23. Oh, sorry. Uh, R13 should be squared. R13 and R23 should be squared. Four pi epsilon naught R squared. So R13 should be squared and R23 should be squared. Thank you for pointing that out. And uh, now the next uh, thing we should do is that what is F13 and what is F23? I would like us to start from F23 because F23 seems very straightforward. Let's start from F23. F, okay, F23 is equal to Q2, Q3. Our Q2 is, we don't, I would need to talk about uh, if it is positive or negative now. Uh, we can just go ahead and say the magnitude of Q, the magnitude of Q. So our Q2 is two, times 10 raised to the power minus six. And our Q3 is five times 10 raised to the power minus six divided by four by epsilon naught R13, R13 is A, that is 0 0.1 meter all squared times R23. So uh, doing this, we should have, when we resolve everything here, we should give us nine newtons should give us nine newtons so that should give us um f23 should be equal to about nine newtons r23 so let me clear the screen F23 equal to nine R23. R23, yeah, R23 carats, Newtons. So now the question is, what is this R23 carat? This is charge Q2. This is charge Q3. The force that Q2 is exerting on Q3 is F23. 
Now, the uh, direction of that force is that it will be in this direction. Q2 will be attracting Q3 in this direction. So since Q2 will be attracting Q3 in this direction, it's easy to say that Q3 will be moving in the negative axis of X. And it's uh, conventional to say that it's conventional to say that uh, this is uh, x caret. Uh, this direction is in direction of x caret. This direction, direction of y caret. It's also uh, conventional to say that x caret we call them i, and uh, y caret we call j. So if it is moving in the negative direction of the x axis, we can say that our r23 caret is equal to minus i. We can say our, uh, we can say that our r23 is moving in minus i uh, direction. So then we can now come to say that our F23 is equal to minus 9i Newton. So let to now talk about uh, what will happen. So now we have our, let me just put this here, the F23 is equal to minus nine I Newton. And let me erase this side. The other question is talking about what is F13? F13, F13, like we said, Q1, Q3, our Q1 is five times sorry, it's minus six. Our Q3 is also five times sorry, it's minus six. Divided by Four pi epsilon naught r one three squared, and in that case, r one three squared will be zero point one root two all squared times r one three caret the unit vector r one three caret. So resolving everything in this side should give us um, is it about 7.9 I'm not really sure about that at the moment but uh, let's try to figure out what will be r13 carrot now we are talking about r1 r13 that is we are talking about and we're also talking about f13 that is the force that q1 is exerting on Q3. What will be the force that Q1 will be exerting on Q3? The force will be repulsive. The force will be repulsive. And since it's a repulsive force, the direction of the force will be in this direction. Q1 will be pushing Q3 away in this direction. So that will be 
uh, so now we are, okay, a student has just helped us in calculating the magnitude here, which is, I think, uh, Eleven, I think I saw something like eleven point two four newtons. Let's assume. So eleven point two R one three. So now we are looking for okay two five. Thank you. R one three. Correct. So now, what is R one three? Correct. R one three carrot is like we trying to say. What is the for, for it to have R13 carrots is talking about how is this resolving this line, the unit vector, this line, what will be the unit vector of this line? The length from this point to this point is we know it as a root 2a, and we are also interested in uh, to resolve it in vector form. So talking about this particular value in vector form. It is said to be plus a and plus a. That is plus a in the x direction and plus a in the uh, y direction. Or let's say plus i plus j. So that's as good as we saying. No, my pen. Zero point one i plus 0 0.1 j divided by the magnitude of divided by the magnitude of 0. Point, uh, uh, the magnitude of this line which is 0 0.1 root 2 so whatsoever you get there. So that's as good as we say 0 0.1, we'll cancel this and this, they'll be left with i plus j divided by root two. So that's as good as saying i over root two plus j all over root two. And uh, and we can now say that our f one three is equal to our f one two is equal to eleven point two five times i over two plus j over two all. Newtons. So when you expand this uh, F13, when you expand F13 and you add to F23, then you will have your F3. So our time is up. We'll continue on Monday. So those that have other classes can please uh, If Some people have raised up their hands. Let me see. Please, uh, those that have raised up their hands, kindly send uh, a message. We have to just leave now so that some other classes can begin. Please send a message to our email address, physics104 at stu.ui.edu.ng. Thank you.